Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King 2 and today I'm going to be giving you part 5 of what if Naruto was in prison and sealed away for 18 years. Remember to give this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform, and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto was sent to a parallel multiverse over an Anime King 3. And also, over an anime king, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto Awaken Aligard's Godly Ability. So go ahead, check out that and enjoy. And remember, if this is the first time you hear my voice and you enjoy the videos on both Anime King, Anime King 2, and Making 3, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be replying and talking about to all of you. So yeah, without further ado, what do you say begin this new episode start? The intro. So, the last part that we left off, as Naruto was at the party with Kurenai and the others, as it was Akamaru tribute, as Kurenai spoke to Naruto as he told her that he didn't mean to hurt Hinata, but she told him that he still did. But he warned her if she hit him again, he was gonna kill her. As his face was stone flat as he spoke, he was dead serious. Soon after she excused herself as Kakashi sat with the blonde as well. As Naruto saw Itachi in the field dancing with Hinata, as he picked himself up after taking a drink as he cut in the dance, as Itachi stepped aside, as Naruto also saw Itachi's civilian wife as well, but he didn't pick her any mind as he danced with Hinata at the end of it, he gave her a gentle kiss on the hand. Afterwards he left as he made his way, as he went and get one of the most expensive and most toxic sake ever. As the thing was a jolt, there was a 1% of hero water in it, the shopkeeper had told him. As Naruto P and he left with two bottles of it. Not soon after he got a well summoned some one of his scouts. It turns out that Sasuke Uchi has been found. As Naruto made his way to the Valley of Dane, where Sasuke stood. They had a brief conversation as Naruto gave him a chance in respect of Itachi and because he wants Timmy to surrender. But Sasuke did not and they fought. And Naruto defeated him. As the both of them their final slash. As Naruto had split him in half. Sasuke had carved right across Naruto's chest. But that wasn't hard to heal by the fox. As Naruto looked down towards the dead Sasuke. Sasuke had a final wish though. He asked for some of his sake. As Naruto gave him some. He also asked for his eyes to be transported to Itachi. As Naruto obliged. Itachi wept tears when he receive his brother ice as Naruto left soon afterwards. As Naruto was making his way back, he found Hinata in his house as she was cooking for him, as he was surprised to see her here. As ever since he had kissed her hand last night, she wanted to build the courage to come over here but now she finally had it. As Naruto went to get washed up, as things start to escalate a bit between them, their movements, the way they talk, the way they look at each other. As Naruto's head started to get influenced by the fox once again, he gripped his head as he started to spasm on the ground, as Hinata quickly made her way, as she had able to bring back Inu and Inuichi, as he needed help because he was gripping his head so tightly. It was then that Inuichi was able to go into his mind, and we were able to see what he did all those years ago. As Naruto had finished his date with Hinata, the fox images and everything was still creeping into his head, and he had to get rid of them, he didn't want to kill his friends. But he knew whose anger was in towards it was the civilians, the council members, so he gathered all 12 of them. And then Naruto proceeded to create a massacre between them. He did not just simply kill them, he tortured them. He plucked their skins, ripped their eyeballs out, he killed them in the most painful way possible. 
even turned them into cannibals, as Naruto made them suffer. He then came in front of the Hokage's tower, as he threw a Kuna as everyone was alerted, as Ned and the others came out there, as he surrendered himself. All the while he hummed to himself, as he seemed to have lost his mind as Ned couldn't understand what was going on. But, it was Kanoha so once you gave yourself up, you could not be killed. You would be sent to prison, they would not kill you. As he handed himself over to the law. As his sentence was immediate, as he was sent to put to prison, until they came for the proper years. So Naruto was taken to prison as he saw, a man called the Crusher of the Stone. As Naruto rushed up to the biggest man in prison as he was a boss, as Naruto proceeded to beat the living crap out of him. Afterwards, he stood tall as he told them that he was their boss now, and the one rule that they had no mess with Naruto Uzumaki, as the Anvils quickly took him and dragged him off. So yeah guys, so basically that's what I thought you guys can switch across the place, check for yourself, so what do you say we begin this new episode? After proceeding to beat the man's head to a bloody pulp, Naruto was locked away in solitary confinement. For once, in the two weeks he was alone to his thoughts, as he leaned his head against the cold concrete. He closed his eyes and went to sleep. It was the most peaceful sleep that he had in weeks. No image of blood and gore. No image of his friends dying. He was happy. Two weeks passed and he got a visitor. Something that surprised him as he saw the worry. Honey brown eyes of Snedi. As he offered a grin and a wave, he saw her shudder a bit. As she remembered the last time he gave her that grin. Hey kid, she said. How are you doing? As Naruto shrugged a bit, despite being in solitary confinement, for the last two weeks he was doing better actually. During the first week the pulse of seals had dampened. The prisoner's chakra was lowered. If they didn't have a 24 hour release of their chakra, the inmates would literally become walking time bombs. The Kyubi had made another appearance, but this time it helped him. Naruto was breaking because of the confinement but the Kyubi came up with a plan. A plan that benefited them both. Naruto would have unrestricted access to his chakra and all the fox wanted to do was talk with the blonde. They will then use their newfound freedom and become a ball of a ninja while hiding who they were. I am doing pretty well, I am not so tired. The bad dreams I have, they passed. How's the paperwork batch and he said. Massive. No thanks to you she said with a twitch of her eyebrow. As she thought about all the paperwork that the blonde's action had caused, her features softened a bit. Naruto, we have reason to believe that Kyubi is behind this. Just tell us, and we'll tighten the seal, to make it so the beast cannot influence you at all. You can get away from this life sentence. She didn't want to put the blonde behind bars. Hell, even Danzo admit that he'd rather have Naruto be a civilian than be behind bars. No, he shouted, as he pounded and dented the table between them as he got to his feet. Stand and stare at the blonde he had dented the metal table. N Naruto? No, please, he said, as he sat back down. I... I almost broke in solitary confinement. No light. No fresh air. The rats and roaches crawling all over me. As he moved, the chains around him rattling. As Nelly features, she tried to school them as best as she could. She could barely think about how he was feeling. How could she understand? She did not understand his situation at all. But the Kyube, he helped me. He helped me through it. He talked to me after I was in solitary confinement for the first few days. Even with our chocolate suppressed, he's able to talk to me. As Naruto lied a bit right there. He's able to make me stay sane through the darkness. Please Bajan, please don't take that away from me. I won't survive if I have to go back to solitary confinement without him, said Naruto. A tear ran down her eyes as she wiped it away. Okay kid, we won't see the be up. But if you ever change your mind, don't be afraid kid, one of the guards tell me or Jiraiya. Snevi got up despite the circumstances as she turned back towards the blonde. Jiraiya and I are still proud of you. You show advanced stealth abilities, able to hide the bodies from a village full of sensors for so long. You also outran Anvus to get to a Jonin who you took apart in under a minute. We're not happy at all that you did what you did, but on a shinobi level, we're proud. He brightened a bit as he watched her walk away. Over the next few months he trained hard and practiced what Taijutsu he could. During his time with Chakra, he tests various seals that he worked on as he sell them to Kanoha for profit. As he got a bank manager to work with him, it was the sixth month of his imprisonment that the first challenger appeared. Well, 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 I heard that Ikuibi Jinjuki was in here. I never thought I would see one of my old students once again. As Naruto glanced up towards the face of Mizuki, the silver haired Chunin was quite the sight. He was a lot more ripped than Naruto remembered him. His hair was also a lot longer. 
Mizuki Sensei. It looks like a person has been good to you. Said Naruto that cheerful tone as he returned back to his book of sealing. I can't believe a brat like you killed Ketsuke. He must have been sleeping. No matter. I'll rectify that problem. As he pulled at two birds from his sleeve but it was sharp down to the finest point. Naruto got to his feet to the grin. As Mizuki rushed forward to end the blonde's life. The next morning, the prison guards found the legendary stupid brothers sitting at a table eating something with gusto. Brother the blonde gave us his taste of meat. I wonder what his secret is. Hmm, we must ask Naruto Sam what his secret is. It's so tender and juicy. They grinned at one another as one of the guards felt something wet drip on his head. As he looked up, the man was shocked to the sight that he saw. Mizuki's head and spine was removed from his body. His legs and arms were missing. The torso and the head was only held together by his intestines. As it was wrapped around the bars up in the ceiling, as he was strung up over one of the metal beams, a look of utter shock was edged onto his face. As the blonde walked out towards the guard, Would you like some, sir? The guard threw up his guts when he saw an eye roll out of the fluid rolling up. For that, Naruto got three weeks in solitary confinement. Another two and a half years passed after that, as Naruto received a letter from Jiraiya. As he sat in a cell reading it, many things had changed. Dear Naruto, if you receive this, then it means I've died, trying to get to the hands of the Akasuke. First and foremost, I want to say I'm sorry. I should have been there more to teach and offer you guidance. The truth of the matter is I was a coward fool, and I was also a failure. I took the easy way out instead of trying, and for that, I am terribly sorry. You look so much like your father. I just couldn't stand to stay. I am your godfather, and I can truly never express how sorry I am for never being there for you. I also know that my sorrow would never mean that much. Your father was Minato Namikaze the Fort Okagi. Your mother was Kushina Uzumaki, a former Anvu commander. Second, I have left everything in my name to you. The rights to Ichi Ichi, the tales of a godsend ninja and all his seals, I have made her own Kanuha. You are now rich, despite being in prison. I hope you take care of yourself with your newfound wealth. Lastly, as my dying wish, I want you to grab Snedda's breast for me. I never got the chance. You as my apprentice must fulfill it for me. Yours truly, Jiraiya. Erosenin. Naruto's eyes watered a bit as he read the letter two times, then a third time, and then something inside him just snapped. Something grew colder, darker, harsher, wicked. As Naruto turned his attention towards the two, stone ninjas entering his cell. So this is the Namikaze brat. As Naruto picked himself up his bangs, hang in front of his eyes. The both of them brandished the actual kunai. Before they could move, Naruto dashed forward and grabbed the one in the right left hand. Naruto palm struck the elbow as the bone snapped out in a bloody, gory manner. As Naruto the kunai and sliced right through the arm and threw it away. As he spun and drive it into the man's throat. Before pulling it out as the other one advanced towards him. His screams alert the guards. As they arrived to find the blonde covered in blood and body parts. As Naruto got up, I'm going to solitary her confinement. Clean up my room while I'm gone. But leave a fresh coat of paint. You don't give us orders, Uzumaki. One of the newer guards said, trying to establish his role of being in control. As Naruto gazed turned towards the man, his eyes were filled with nothing but bloodlust and anger. You're cleaning the toilet. If it's not spotless when I get back. As Naruto gazed, turned murderous even more. Get out of my head! The memory was suddenly stopped as Inuichi was forced to get out of Naruto's mind as he knew that he should listen right away. As Naruto's eyes snapped open, as he got to his feet, you keep what you saw to yourself, Inuichi, he said. As he saw a worried looking at an Ino there as well. As he ran a hand through his hair, what's the damage, he said. Inuichi spoke up, I'll prescribe some heavy dosage medication for some dreamless sleep. You need to rest minimum of 5 days. I would say that we need to do therapy together but I know that you'll accept it. So I'll get you the medication. Naruto nodded as he made his way towards his couch as he lied down. Inuichi took this as a sign to leave as he took Ino with him. Hinata was worried as she wasn't sure what to do as she walked over her slowly so she wouldn't disturb the blonde on the couch. Naruto-kun, are you alright? He did not answer not right away. His eyes were close. As he finally spoke, no, I won't be alright Hinata. I'm a monster, a butcherer, and I forgot that for a moment, I can't ever again. I'm insane on a level 
I can barely think of, as Naruto focused inwardly. Sorry, Grandma. I did get a bit snippy with you, but I want this. Give me this at least. You're making a mistake, Naruto. But I will give you what you desire. But when we're trapped once more, I will not help you until you understand the full extent of your sins. As Naruto sighed because he felt Grandma's presence slipped away, Hinata sat beside him as she touched his chest with her hand. I want to stay here, she said, if you would let me. His cerulean eyes opened as he looked at her before he simply nodded. She got up as she moved towards the mantle. Naruto-kun, why are a few of these face down? Erosenin said that they were his greatest regrets in the world. I never looked at them, not knowing, chosen to not know what that great man regretted. He moved towards her side as he looked towards the face down picture. As Naruto moved and picked it up before he turned it over, as Naruto felt something clench inside of him, it was a younger Jiraiya holding a small, blonde bundle with tears going down his face. The blonde bundle also had three risk marks on each cheek. As Naruto understood why, these were face down. Jiraiya couldn't bear to look upon it, knowing what he had given up. As the blonde did not cry, as he not a doubt that he had any more tears to release. As she gently took the photo and laid back down. Let's go to sleep, Naruto Kan, she said. As Naruto barely heard her words, but he followed her. It was funny. This house had been his father's first. Then his master's. To be fair though, Jerry didn't know what to be called master like most senseis. Naruto was thankful for that. They were too informal with one another. Now it was his. He stripped off his shirt and pants. Hinata had to suppress herself as she saw him in his orange boxers. The orange was a bit funny, but he was ripped. She paused because she realized she was going to have to strip as well. She still resolves. She would not hesitate in front of him. She reached down and removed her mesh armor shirt. The next thing Naruto knew he was hit by something. As he smelled the scent of vanilla and lavender, she had thrown her shirt on his head. As he removed it just in time to catch her pants, she was blushing. She knew that there was nothing bad to hide about her body. But she was a bit pale to her opinion and she was a bit too curvy and also she had a few scars and things got rough on missions or training as she looked down a bit afraid to look back up but in his eyes she was gorgeous her skin while pale had a healthy color to it her large chest was supported by a black bra there were some light scars on her stomach no doubt from training given the lack of depth to them he made a mental note to stomp keeping in the ground for hurting like that as his eyes moved her hips as she was still wearing shorts as he saw the few scars going down. I I understand if I'm hideous, Naruto Kanchi whispered in a low tone, her hand subconsciously going in front of her, and she looked so worried. She wouldn't be able to stand it if he thought that she was ugly, too scarred for his taste. Hinata, you're gorgeous, he said. He watches the hope return back to her as he stepped forward, as he grasped both of her hips. I just hope I'm not too ugly for you, he told her. I mean, Kami, I'm scarred up over eight times the amount of times you are, he said. She shook her head as she leaned and kissed his cheek. You're quite handsome, Nurtikan. You look like a fearsome protector. Each and every scar that you have adds on to the fact that you're willing to get your hands dirty to protect someone and willing to put your body and life on the line to protect your precious people. And to me, that is the most beautiful thing I've seen in a very long time. It is why I never care much for pretty boys like Sasuke san had been. As Nurta snorted, yeah, I suppose that is true. Sasuke never had many scars, even. When we fought last, speaking of which, she said, as she looked towards a long horizontal scar across his chest, this one is new. Sasuke was good, a good fight to have had, but he still lost. Her Byakuen flashed on for a moment, Nurtikan, the cut damage, some of your ribs, even cut through them. Why didn't you go to the hospital? Last time I was in the hospital, I had Grandma, missed my head bringing forth the violence and need for blood. Naruto said laughing, I'm not sitting, another week in bed. Just to see what Karama has for me in store this time. No, thank you. Fine, she said. Snelly Sama trained me in medical procedures as well. As she pushed him onto the bed, much to his surprise, she got on his waist. As she gave him a slight glare. I am your personal medic from now on. You would tell me when you're hurt from now on. I don't care if you don't like it. As her glowing green palms pressed towards his chest, as her beacon was focused, as Nurta lie back, so he said, Are you gonna wear a naughty nurse outfit the next time you heal me? She rolled her eyes as she lay on top of the blonde when she was done. Hush you, she said. I'm still upset you won't get proper medical treatment. Well, they're offering it to me, so I don't have to go to the hospital anymore. 
She smacked him lightly in the chest. You're impossible, she said. But fine, you win. I'll be your personal at home medic. But that means. I'll just have to stay here, she said. As Naruto slipped his hand up and down her spine. Yeah, you will, he said. As she rolled off his chest. It's not really comfortable to sleep on my stomach. As she pressed up against his side as she placed her head on his shoulder. As Naruto lived here. The next morning, Hinata woke up. As she was alone as she looked around. The blonde was not in the bed or in the shower. She activated her Byakugan. He was on top of the roof. His chakra levels were... Low. As she watched him. He was in a state of perfect relaxation. Birds were all over him, his shoulders, in his palm and top of his head. His eyes were closed. She watched as the chakra came out. It was like it was sleeping and he woke up. As it spread in a pulse. Going far past her Byakugan view. And then the pulse came rushing back inside of him. And the chakra was so calm. It was like he was using a sonar. She took one of his jackets and pulled her on herself. As she made her way to the rooftop. As it was rather chilly. Yet the blonde was sitting shirtless. She was hit with the next pulse of chakra. And the blonde could already know that she was there. The blonde eyes slowly open as. There was a bar. And black bar in his eye. Its eyelids had a yellow. Orange color on it. Naruto Kanji said wondering. Sage mode he explained. His voice was calm and there was no bloodlust there. He was just so calm. I train a lot with the toads. Sen and Shadow learn this technique. Erasenni was also a sage. He was a toad sage for a while. But when he died it was up to me to become the toad sage. I doubt I'll ever be as great as Erasenni but I will do what I can do. For his memory. It allowed me to become one with nature. Granted I can move around and fight. But the natural power that I sustained will slowly start to seep out. Before I have to refill once again. She nodded solve that she had done a bit of research into the sage art, into the medical field. Unfortunately, some in animals were the only ones with the ability to teach it and she never had a contract. What's with the pulse of the chakra, she asked. Think of it as a communication system, said Naruto, as he launched out another pulse. All of the elemental nations, toads train, with sage art, are sending out the same pulse. They act as a tower, like a signature booster. I have two more targets to find, suddenly. The pulse came in a straight line. Did you find one, she said. As she could see what he was doing. He was sending the signal as it was bouncing off the toads and spreading around the elemental nation. As Naruto's hit with the pulse back. Chakra fly even faster than my father. Flying Thundercard technique, he says he got to his feet. That toad is as far out as he possibly can be. But he found Madara Uchiha standing over a cliff top. As Naruto head inside. She bit her lip. I'm coming with, she said. The blonde glanced towards her. I'm coming with you. You have little abilities to counter Genjutsu Nurutakan. And also, I can track his movements better. Then you'll be able to, she said. As she was going to argue with the blonde about going as she knew that he was going to go. As Nurut looked at her for a moment, he didn't say anything before he finally nodded as he got dressed. As he grabbed his kiss or gamma. We're making a stop somewhere Bachan told me about before she died. As the both of them move out, they came to a ruined stone building as it was barely held together. Naruto bowed his head before heading inside. He came out some time later with a scroll. It's the Uzumaki clan compound. I'll see to it that it's rebuilt someday. As they both start to move, Hinata felt a small thrill in her chest. Knowing that she was going to help the blonde fight, she steadied her breathing a bit. It was not going to be easy and it was not going to be fun at all. As they got closer, she realized they were heading towards the remains of the hidden stone. Madara and Obito had split the Zetsu armies and hit both Kiri and the Hidden Stone in two prom attacks. Kano and Kumo were going to be next, but Obita and Madara started to argue for some reason. So the Zetsu armorers turned towards Kumo first as they raced over the hills and mountains. Soon they even left the Hidden Stone behind them. They went through uncivilized parts of nature as he had heard toads croaking and it seems that Naruto responded to them. It took two weeks, but they found Madara as he was overlooking a bottom of a ravine. Hinata Byakan couldn't even see the bottom of the chasm. It was deep. As Naruto unsealed his Kizar Gama, Hinata walked beside him. This place, anything that enter it, will never be seen again. That is how the stories go, said Madara. As Naruto looked towards a man he wished he had a seal tag for him but, Madara had the Renegon, something. Naruto wasn't sure how it was seal. 3. He has never felt Madara Chakra before. Madara turned towards the two. I find this place fitting. The name escaped me, but it means the end of the world. It was here I find the Kayubi so long ago. 
before I went to fight Hoshirama. When I defeat you here, it will be the end of the world. Naruto launched the wing blade towards Madara, who leaped to the right as he flashed through hand signs. Fire style fireball jutsu. As the massive ball of fire rakes towards them, they move as he jumped to the side. Below was Sekinata, as he had to move again as two roots erupted from the ground trying to pierce them. As Naruto turned and kicked the Madara that chased after them, as he ducked and twisted under the other one that came towards them, two sets of hands. Below us, Sedinata, as Naruto reached down and grabbed, tearing the wood clone out of the ground. Hinata dodged and weaved through the attacks by the Madara who attacked her. It was just a wood clone. As Naruto decimated his own with his Kisargama, she watches the clones all converge on Naruto. But she watches Naruto's getting faster and stronger, so much, so much more stronger. She realized why. There were so much seals over his body as he was slowly deactivating them, releasing more of his power. She had no idea what kind of things Blonde could do, but his strength by now surpassed Nelly's. As he gave a clone a single punch, it blew into pieces. As Naruto duck and snapped one of their necks as he turned, his elbow took off one of the heads of the clones. As he lifted one of them up with boot strength and brought it down, as he snapped its spine, the real Madara looked towards Blonde. Well, seems I'll have to deal with you myself, he said. His clones were getting nowhere. They were just a waste of time. Wood clones are like shadow clones. Not as strong as the original. He did a strike out with her hand as she destroyed the wood clone that was fighting her. Fire style. Great dragon fire technique, said Madara. Easily S rank technique, a massive roaring dragon flooded towards Naruto. As Naruto threw several tags out. As water dragons emerged from them and doused the fire as steam filled the place. Summoning. Kayube. He never heard Naruto yelling pain in the mist. As Madara did not hide his irritation that he could not summon the Kayubi out of the blonde. Wood release, he said. Advent of the world of flowing trees. As he placed both hands onto the ground, trees erupted from the earth as they started to spread their spore all over the place. A whipping sound could be heard as he started to spin violently. As Naruto threw a rusting shuriken as he destroyed the entire path. Using tags to burn away the trees as the mist and the pollen sort of thing away. Madara looked towards Naruto. The power behind that jutsu was quite incredible. As Madara eyes looked towards the girl. Universal pull. Hinata was yanked as she was gripped by him. A Hayuga. Interesting. He tossed her into the chasm. Her eyes went wide. There was nothing for her to grip onto. Nothing for her to hold onto. She was just falling. Hinata said Naruto as he turned and threw the Kizurigama. His body enhanced by the fox power. It ripped through the chest of Madara, where his heart should have been. Well, he was the Edo Tensei. As Naruto dashed towards the edge of the cliff, as he activated all the weighted seals on his body, making himself so much heavier. As he dropped face first, heading into the ravine after her, she tumbled and twisted as she heard Naruto cries. As she heard what Madara said that nothing was ever seen once again, once it fell down this ravine, as it was so dark and getting even more dark. I'm so sorry, Naruto-kun. She whispered in the wind, a few tears sliding from her eyes. She wasn't sure how long she would drop for. She wasn't sure how much it would hurt when she hit the ground. But as a shinobi, she did not fear death. No, she feared what Naruto would do without someone there to keep his sanity in check. She could almost smell his inman scent once more. Hinata! Hinata eyes widened as she saw the blonde chasing after her into the depths of hell itself. As he reached down his hand wrapped around her waist, she clung onto his chest as she would not let go. As Naruto sent a clone ahead, as the clone moved and destroy any wind resistance that might cause him to splat. Water was down below, it was a river. Hang on, said Naruto, as he went down, as he plunged in. Twist and turn as he could not walk on it as he were thrown to the slide and twist as he drop. Pain coursed through his body as he entered by hitting it first so his body. Something was twisted and something was broken but the way he held her, she would not be in any pain. He hit a rock with his back then his head then his leg as he slammed into various blunt objects but he held on to her tight. He didn't know how deep they were inside the ravine but they were still going. It seemed for hours as they twist and go this way that way as they finally slowed and surfaced. As they coughed a bit, she saw that Naruto body was still as she helped him. As she guided the both of them towards the island that she saw, over to the side, as she dragged him onto the island, 
It was a small mass of land to get everything settled and she could see all over it. She gasped when she saw Nurta wounds. His knee was dislocated, his ankle was the same. As Nurta reached down and snapped them back in the face, he growled in anger and frustration as he did. It hurt a lot, but it did it correctly. That is why it hurt so much. I could have reset them, Nurta, can she said. No time, said Nurta. We need to get back. I don't know if I can find him again if he escapes. Nurta can wait. We need rest. A few hours are all that we need, she said. As Nurta spun as he looked towards her in a few hours, he can move from where he once was. We got lucky, but we can't always count on luck. Nurtakan, as he turned, she smacked him. As Nurta glanced towards her, You need rest, she said. Let your leg heal before you fight him again. Either you rest, or I'll make you rest, she said. Her voice steely, a tick working his jaw. She honestly think that she could make him rest. Then meet me, he said. She stepped forward towards him, her face innocent in a smile. She moved quickly as she hit, points over his body as he dropped down to the ground. Numbing him for the moment. He was the one that actually let her hit him because he wanted to see how far would she go, but she actually paralyzed him. As she stood over him, if I let you get up, will you please at least rest for a few hours? Five at the most, she said. He realized that he might have torn something important, the way he unsealed and resealed all the seals on his body, because he was feeling pain that he shouldn't be feeling. Four hours, he said. She nodded softly. As they got a fire going, to dry the boat with them off, and she peeled off her wet t-shirt. As she lay her shirt beside her jacket, she unhooked her bra. As Naruto looked at her, she had to get out of the wet clothes, but damn it, did she have to do it in front of him like that? As his body was itching to grab her, he turned, as he could hear everything with his enhanced hearing, as he heard her removing her pants, as he was arguing with his mind. As her biathlon was activated and she could see him pulsing when he saw everything. She had an idea to keep him there to heal. Despite what he thought, he was in worse shape than he thought. She could see torn ligaments, fractured bones, torn muscles. But he probably wasn't feeling any of it. As she wrapped her arms around him as her chest pressed into his back. Let's get you out of those clothes as she guided him towards the rock. She slowly removed his shirt. And she placed it down near the fire. So it would dry. Hinata, he said. She flashed him a smile as she removed his shirt. But he got stuck on his nose a bit as she leaned forward and kissed him right in the lips. She looked at the side, she felt his hot skin against her chest. If you start this fire, Hinata, I won't be able to calm it this time, he told her. Good, she said. I wouldn't have it any other way. She watched as a hungry look came in his eye. She knew there was no turning back now. Well, she didn't want it any other way. As she always wanted like this. Time skip a few hours later. He agreed to only four hours. As Naruto was still awake, as Neta was still asleep, as he wouldn't wake her, as he unsealed something, as he held up the blank white mass, there was no eyes, no mouth, no nose, as he knew what it was, it was a dead man, copy mass, it was a forbidden mass of the Uzumaki clan, only to be used in extremely dire situations. The cases of people who turned the mass said that the wearer was granted immense power but they were driven insane in the end. Naruto wondered how his own sanity would stand to the mass. All he had to do was write a name in blood on the mass. As he waited until the morning, until Nita woke up, as he packed everything away, he had one of his toads resummon them to the mountain. As it resummoned them to one of the sentries, he had Nita stay back as he went to go face Madara once more. As the man was just standing there as Nurta stood behind him, Madara turned towards the blonde as he raised her eyebrow. As Nurta pulled out the dead man copy mass, and he wrote a single name on it, Hushurama Senju. As he held out the mass to Madara, his eyes filled with recognition. You would use that mask against me. Someone as insane as you are. Perhaps that is what it takes, insanity. As he slipped the mask on and pulled his chakra as it fused to his face, he let out an inhuman scream as he dropped to the ground and clutched at his face. Madara stood back as he wanted to see the outcome. A blinding white light that not even the running gun could see through appeared. As the light faded away, a figure was there on the ground. Dark hair and dark eyes looking at Madara. Dark red armor over a black suit. Senju Hoshirama, the first Okage was amongst the world of the living ones more. Madara stood there as he looked towards his longtime rival with an impassive look on his face. How many decades has it been since he last saw the first Okage? How many years has it been since he last saw this man? The only man to push him to his limits. 
Hushrama cracked his knuckles and rolled his shoulders a bit. As he stepped towards Madara, he could feel natural energy rolling through his body from the blonde sage that he has inhabited. As he collected the natural energy, Hushrama, it's been a long time since Madara. That it has, Madara, that it has. Hushrama said his voice was a bit more subdued than usual. Madara looked towards Senju. The Uzumaki had chosen well on who to bring back to battle him with the dead man mass. The mass allowed the wearer to pick an individual. Their body would then be a host to that individual. But you have to have similar built and chakra levels like that individual. If a Jonin or Chunin was using the mass, they could not summon someone like Hushrama. It speaks volumes of Naruto reserves. Given who he was able to summon, Hushrama also, because of Naruto's chakra was in the prime of his abilities and he was able to use a Mokutan as well. But the mask came at a cost. It was not just Hoshirama. The two personalities were slammed together to create one individual. It usually caused some identity crisis when the wearer was finished with the mask. In the case of Hoshirama and Ruto, Hoshirama would not be as friendly as he once was. Because of how different Ruto was, he would be more subdued and calm. The mask was so badly forbidden, Mother was surprised that Uzumaki would use it. Of course, desperate times call for desperate measures. Hoshirama looked at his longtime friend and rival. What happened between us, Madara? We found you the village together where we could end the constant rivalry between the Senjus and the Uchiyas. I soon not happen, Madara said, as he never forgot about his brother. He had not cared about the seat of the Ukagi. It did not compare to his younger brother, Aizuna. Hoshirama sighed. I'm sorry, Madara. You know I could never truly express how sorry I am. I know, said Madara as he looked over the cliff once more. Last I heard you were sealed inside the belly of the Shinigami. I still am. However, the dead man copy mass is truly a unique artifact. It bend the laws of nature so much more than any other artifact out there. Uzumaki Naruto could have called upon the Sage of Six Path if he knew his name. As Muller nodded before he turned back to face Hoshirama. Will you give me the Kayubi? he said. No, I won't. You should know better than to even ask. Hoshirama held his hand out to Madara. Let us have a handshake for old time's sake. Madara looked towards the offered hand as he took it into his own. It was then that Hoshirama had tightened around his, as Madara felt something off. Hoshirama was pumping chalk into his body, as his hand turned into a wood and it was coming up on his body. You are smart, using my cells to supplement your body, said Hoshirama. But I was the best and brightest to ever use the Mokidon. No one will ever surpass me, and you are still at Edotente Revival. Your sacrifice was one of your Zetsu clones, made for myself. As Madara forcefully tried to tug away, but he could not, even pulling at his hand. I can step into a tree, the hardened wood, separating like water as I do. But I must put the cells back when I enter the tree. I do this by originally mashing my cells to the tree before I enter it. And when I leave my body recognize, the tree as an extension of myself allowing me to return it back to normal. And because it is my cells that make up your revival body, my cells are in your body. I am simply commanding them to harden, Hushrama said. As Madara entered her arm, turned into a block of wood. Almighty push, said Madara. But nothing happened. As he said it once more, but nothing happened. I have already disrupted the chakra coils in your eyes, said Hushram as he continued to pump his chakra into Madara. I am sorry, my old friend, but this will be your tomb. Your soul will be forever encased in this wood I have created. It will never decay, never burn. Madara threw his free hand straight towards Oshirama's face as it slammed into his jaw twice before he caught it as he started petrifying that hand as well. His Rinnegan reverted back to their normal eyes due to lack of chakra. By now your feet have grown into thick roots buried deep within the ground. You shall never leave this place. You will be an eternal monument to your sins and my power. Madara's scream in rage and frustration, his face twisted in anger and agony and rage until he was petrified into a wooden statue. As Hoshirama finally released his hand, I'm sorry. May you find peace. As Hoshirama turned, as Naruto was currently in a meeting with someone, and he was not going to release the mask just yet, let him talk. As he made his way, when Naruto awoke, he was going to make sure that he woke up with a Hayuka girl. Meanwhile, Hinata was waiting for Naruto to come back as she kept her eyes sharp. As she sat on a rock, a figure came into her vision she paused and gasped when she saw the amount of chakra the person possessed. The chakra was as massive as Naruto's but 
it was neither Madara or Naruto. Who was his new player? As she slipped into a fighting stance to prepare herself. But what she saw, well who she saw surprised her even more than when she found out that Naruto killed the civilian council. Hokage-sama, she said. He offered a smile. Naruto is a very lucky man, he said, as he sat at a nearby rock. But uh, uh, how are you alive, Hinata said. If he was alive, why was he not in Kanuha? You were seen fighting the third Okage during the Sound and Sand invasion almost 18 years ago. You were in a Tensei revival. You're right, he said. Your Naruto is a very stubborn, crazy individual. Hinata was getting a bit concerned. What, what do you mean, she said. He used the artifact, an expressly forbidden artifact from his clan. He used it to bring me back to fight Madara. I won because of Madara's foolishness for power. I could remove the artifact at any time, but I want to give Naruto some more time before I remove it. He's seen those that he hasn't seen in a very long time, or ever, in a few special cases. Hinata was a bit relieved but still worried. He will be alright, won't he? She asks. I really don't know. The artifact has driven insane men completely insane. So what will it do to an insane man? Will it shatter his personality even more? Or will it offer some stability? Who knows, he said, as he wished he could be of more use. Hinata's shoulder slump. Naruto was just so stubborn but coming. She loved it about him. Hushirama touched the ground as he forced a few lilies to grow as he picked them. He stepped towards Hinata. Could you do me a favor, hyuga -san? Of course, she said. Take these and place them on my granddaughter's grave. I haven't been able to see Nsenai-chan since I was sealed in the of Shinigami, but I still want to leave something for her. Hinata accepted the small bouquets of lilies as she nodded softly. With Naruto, moments after he put on the dead man copy mask, as Naruto found himself in a bed, he leaped off it as he landed on his feet. As he snapped his head around, he was completely nude and possibly in a hostile situation. His eyes adjusted to the fact that no one was there and he was not strapped down to the bed, he was free. As he realized where he was, he was in his apartment, the old one that he got from Saratobi. As he checked the bed, yes, it was indeed the same bed from before. He pressed his hand down on it as he felt the spring that always poked him in the back. Well, this is weird. As he moved to the bathroom, what the hell was he doing back in Kanoha? And why was he in his old apartment? As he kicked the bathroom door open, stepping in, but no one was in there. As he looked at himself in the mirror, he was still himself. His older face looked back at him. He tried to speak with Kram, but either the fox was not there, or he was not listening. But Naruto heard nothing at all. As Naruto checked himself, what the hell? Every scar, every seal that he had over his body was all removed. He channeled his chakra through his stomach, but there was nothing there. Kram's seal was gone. As he stepped to the bathroom, getting more and more concerned what the hell was going on here. As he opened the closet and saw there was a single outfit there, a black shinobi body outfit. As he took it out and zipped it on, he had clothes now, he needed a weapon. He checked the apartment but there was nothing, not even a butter knife. As he reared his foot back and kicked the door open, he created a clone together natural engine. As he headed down to the streets, it looked like he was in canoe about this place. Definitely was not the village. As several things gave that fact away, the first thing that he noticed was the monument. Only five were there despite Kakashi's face being added sometime while he was in jail. Second, there was no hustle and bustle on the streets. In a major village like Kanova, people were always moving around and going their way. But now, none of it was there. As Naruto made his way over to his father's apartment, the place that he lived now in the actual Kanova, he didn't have his security seal on it. As he reared his foot back and kicked the door, only for a pain to shut up his leg, as it felt like he had kicked solid concrete that would not budge. He moved and slammed his shoulder against it, but he was thrown back. He picked himself up as he rubbed his shoulder. Yeah, this is weird, he thought to himself. As he turned to see the Hokage tower from here, and he saw someone looking at him, the silhouette of a person, as he moved. It took him only seconds to get there. As he bolted up the stairs, there was no one there to stop him. As he quietly made his way, the closer he got. As he reared his foot back and kicked the door wide open to have a better wide open view. That is what he learned from his long time in prison. It was easy to get jump when there was a small view that you could only look at. As Naruto nose twitched when he smelled tobacco, as he saw smoke coming from the Hokage's chair, 
The back was turned to him as he saw smoke rising in the air. It's been a while since I've been able to enjoy three of my favorite things. In the same day, as Naruto was shocked, that voice, no, that's not possible. As the chair slowly spin around to show, Harrison, Sir Tobi. As Naruto didn't, didn't understand, as he looked at the old man, who was alive. But guys, be in subs right here. If you want to see the next part to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notification to stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in the social media platform. And also, guys, stay in tune for the rest of the tips coming your way over an Anime King and Anime King 3. And remember, for new and this is the first time you hear my voice, go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and support. Remember to comment down below and tell me if you're new, I'll be playing talking about all of you. And yes guys, I did have three channels, Anime King, Anime King 2, and Making 3, which I post what you find every single day for you guys to enjoy. So go ahead and click that red subscribe button and become a part of the Making family and thank you for all of your help and support. And yeah, without further ado, I'm Wolf now. See you guys soon. Peace.